And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. God introduced the principle of rest. He gave it to us not simply for our physical being, but as we know, he also gave the Sabbath to us for our spiritual being. He wants us to rest from the works of the flesh, which are listed in Galatians 5, 19 through 21. The works of the flesh, all those different gross sins. God says that the purpose of my Sabbath was to give you a sign to show you that the goal is holiness. Which means that we must rest. Did you know every week is a reminder of what we're called to be? Think about it. Commandments number 1 to 3, don't do it, do it. Commandments number 5 through 10, don't do it, do it. Commandment number 4, be. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. You can't keep nothing holy until you're holy. So therefore, God is actually calling us to be something, to enter into an experience with Him. And He gives us this blessed rest. Rest from our labors of work of sin, but also physical rest for the body. Then He goes on, Trust in God, but of the tree of the knowledge, of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt not surely die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. Eve had to trust God. Adam had to trust God. Unfortunately, they failed. Now, obviously, if you put nutrition, exercise, water, sunshine, temperance, air, rest, and trust in God, what does it spell? New Start. And that is where New Start came from. New Start came from the Bible. New Start is inspired by Scripture. It's not something some genius conjured up. These principles are from the Scripture. And we ought to be careful who we give credit to when it comes to the principles that God himself laid out because what will happen is man will get the credit that belongs only to God. New Start is a principle and a program that comes from the Bible. That's why I wanted to show that to you. Let's close it out. Scientific facts. Food when eaten is broken down into blood. The blood then takes nutrients, oxygen, and etc. to the brain. The brain utilizes these elements in order to send proper signals to the body that it may function right. Those are scientific facts. Now why am I bringing out that point? See, we've gone full circle. We started with the great controversy, didn't we? And now we end with the great controversy. You see, what you and I take in our system, brothers and sisters, it gets converted into blood. That blood feeds the brain. The brain takes the nutrients, takes the oxygen, takes all the positive from that which we have put within and utilizes it so the brain can give proper messages to the body to do and not to do. Why is that so important? Because what's the true reason God wants us to take hold of health reform? Brothers and sisters, it's found right in Romans 7 and verse 25. That's our final text that we turn to. Romans chapter 7 and verse 25 I want you to notice what the Bible says. In Romans 7 and verse 25, the Bible speaks in very plain language to you and I. And when you get there, I'm going to ask that you say amen. amen. In Romans 7 and verse 25, let's read it together. The Bible says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the what? Mind, I myself serve what? The law of God. But with the flesh, the law of sin. You see, it is with the mind that we serve God's law. The great controversy started in heaven. That war, it started over God's law. And the great controversy now is here on this earth. And the basis of the controversy is over God's law. Who will obey and who will not? And therefore, remember, the devil, yes, he's after us, but what is it specifically the devil's after? The mind. Now do you understand why he wants our minds? He knows that if I get your mind, I can get you to not serve God's law. And if I can get you to not serve God's law, he says, then I know you'll be lost. Because the Bible says, here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. And the devil tries to get through our mind through food. 
He tries to get through our mind. Do you remember those scientific facts? Stuff gets broken down into blood. The blood feeds the mind. The mind then therefore takes the nutrients and then it can go ahead and give proper instruction. The devil knows if I can get your mind, if I can put that in you, which will poison your blood, then your mind is going to feed off of that poisoned blood and make bad decisions. Amen. And people have the nerve to say, health reform has no connection with your salvation. They are ignorant of the word of God. The purpose of health reform, brothers and sisters, is holiness first, health second. And God wants us to understand that in this final hour, where we are soon about to see all things break loose, and the mark of the beast, which is dealing with God's law, will be enforced, it is only those whose minds have been fortified that will be able to serve God and to serve His law, and be thou faithful, yea, even unto death. My prayer and my hope is that through this study, we understand God is not in the business of making healthy sinners. God is not trying to take a diabetic so he can stop being a diabetic and become healthy, bold, and strong in sin. God would prefer to leave him sick so he could do less damage. So that when we think about our work in the spreading of the health message, please, brothers and sisters, don't get caught up in any program that teaches simply to help diabetics no longer be diabetics. To help people with high blood pressure to no longer have high blood. That is not our work. That is not our work. God will hold it against you because he's going to say, now you empowered somebody to even fight more against my kingdom. But what God wants us to understand is that when we teach health reform like this, when we teach health reform in connection with those blessed three angels messages, we give the people more healing than they ever expected. Let us be faithful in the work that God has given us. Amen? Amen. Some of us in this room might be going through some type of suffering, some type of sickness, some type of disease. And brothers and sisters, I want to let you know right now, if you're on medication, you have to get off. You have to. I'm saying it under the authority of the Word of God. You have to. Some may say, Brother Lemon, where do you get the boldness to say that? It's simple. The Bible says, If any man does not receive the mark of the beast, he will not be able to buy or to sell. I don't care if you got Medicaid, Medicare, or some type of health coverage. If you refuse the mark of the beast, you won't be able to use your medical coverage anymore. So what are you going to do? How are you going to have health now? So don't you think now is the time to say, okay, I gotta over, I, I must overcome this diabetes. I must overcome this high blood. I must overcome whatever the ailment is because a day is right around the corner, brothers and sisters, where you're not going to have the privilege to buy a cell and your medical coverage will mean nothing. And right now, the only reason why some of us are even on medication is because of our coverage. We got to start thinking. You can't say, oh, well, when that time comes, then I'll trust God. God is going to say, too late. Why in the world would you put off today? Exercise faith. If you can exercise faith when the mark of the beast comes, why can't you exercise it now? Think about it, brethren. So we have to get on God's program and see and taste the goodness of God and watch him work. Amen. If it's any of your desire to be made free, whether it be from oppression of sin, remember those three reasons. Some of us are going through a lot of problems right now. Some of us may not be sick, but some of us might have some serious problems in our homes, uh, with our children, with our spouses, with friends and co-workers. Some of the, the problems are just enormous. But God comes today and he says, I want to heal you. He says, my eight doctors can take care of every problem that you have. God says, just trust me. How many of us are willing to trust him today? And because that's your desire, then I'm going to invite you to kneel with me as we close with prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the encouraging words that you have given to us through the teachings of the Bible. 
Father, your word truly is a living word. 